This is a dead sea urchin, so I'm gonna show you how I clean them. Um, I just take tweezers, and the bottom of the sea urchin, this is the mouth. And so I just pluck it out, try to. Oh my God, it's usually a lot easier, but. Now that you're on camera. Now that I'm on is. camera, forget it. You try a new one? No, we'll get it, we'll get it. Your hand's blocking the camera. Do you see those four teeth? You want to pull that out. Are those real teeth? I don't know. I just call them teeth. Oh, oh, oh my God. Is he still alive? No. Right. He's been... He is deader than... Oh, my gosh. If he was... If he was alive, his spines would be moving all over the place. All right. Almost. I have to beat you with a stick too. Yeah. You can like cut a hole in it if you want, but I'm trying not to destroy too much of the sea urchin. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, so close. Like I said, I'm trying not to make a little bit of a hole. Oh, almost. Almost. That's pretty evil looking. Oh, come on. Here we go. Oh. Better than nothing. There we go. Oh, so there's definitely there's four teeth. So you want to make sure you get the four teeth. There's no smell, Robert. What are you, what's making you sick? It's just disgusting. Okay. I think I got, so then I'm not, a, I'm in the, at a shell cleaning station, then I would rinse it out. And if there was any left, it would pop out. And as you can see, there's like no guts or anything because this has been dead for days. And so if it was only dead for a couple days and it hadn't dried out, there would be like orange guts. You just rinse that out and then you just sit this out dry it, and then when we get home from vacation, I'm gonna show you the next step. So it took me two minutes to do this because what I could have done is cut a bigger hole with a knife to pop that out, but I don't wanna damage it too much. I don't mind taking two minutes to pick out, to take my tweezers and pick out the teeth. Do you see what I'm saying? I could have made it easier, but yeah. then, then you risk damaging it because like right where the mouth is, it's very fragile right is, there. is the, mo the easiest. If you yeah. cut into this, you're starting to break the shell. Mm -hmm. And so that's why I just like to pull it this way, even if it ended up taking two minutes. So as you can see, there's nothing else in there because it's shaking around and you don't even hear anything else. So this is the stinky stuff. So next step is um, get it home and then we're gonna soak it in alcohol um, to make sure to get all the stink out of it. We got home yesterday from Sanibel. Um, I put all the shells in the garage. I am out in the garage right now. It is 30 degrees outside since it is January. So I can't really clean the sea urchins or shells outside. So I will be doing that in my garage. Um, so the first step, uh, well in the cleaning the sea urchins I showed taking out the inside. And now that we're home, we're gonna see if it made it um, on the flight okay. And then I'm gonna soak them in rubbing alcohol um, this is, since it's currently the pandemic, this is kind of hard to find because uh, everyone buys this up um, from the stores because you can use it to make your own hand sanitizer. So um, I did have a couple um, in my uh, bathroom to make hand sanitizer myself, um, which I have plenty of other hand sanitizer, so I'm going to use it for this um, step of cleaning the surgeon. So. Uh, I can see bits and pieces of sea urchin, which is kind of a bummer. That means it definitely has a little damage. So let's just peel off. Um, and it stinks. Let's be honest. Just so you realize, mm, don't breathe in. Why I don't normally deal with sea urchins is going to, oh my God, I'm trying not to gag. They stink. It stinks. Even though I've cleaned it out. <clears throat> Ugh. You always miss some. There's still, you know, probably guts and stuff cleaning on seed like inside. So that's why you do it the next step. Try not to breathe in, Jenny. Try not to breathe in. 
So, oh, I just got, I got this glass dish. I'm just gonna line these in here. Breathe out, breathe out. So here, one is broken. See what, see the inside, so I, inside, oh, sorry. Um, since it's my garage, <laughs> I gotta look up. I am using a headlamp because, you know, as of all, most garages does not have the best lighting. So I'm trying to keep this out of the shadow so you can see what the insides look like. And so you're, um, see there's nothing in there, but you can see a bit of like dried guts on, the, and that's, that's what smells. I'll just put that one to the side for now. Oh, let's see. And see, so the reason they have holes in the top, that one, see this, see why this one has a hole in the top? When I found it this way. So other sea creatures will get on top of the sea urchin and suck out the insides and eat them. So that's why if you come across one with a little hole, another creature has already eaten, ate, whatever. There, it could also be, they could be stinky too because you can see they're a little, they're still a little wet. Uh, with Cinnabow was like kind of cold, never like too bright and sunny. So it really didn't have an opportunity. Okay, so that one's broken. Okay, so, so far that one's broken. And I didn't keep them like that. So two broke during the flight. That's actually pretty darn good that I only had two casualties so far. All right, so here we go. I got a tray full. Now I'm just gonna take the alcohol and I, I want them completely covered. Hopefully this bottle's enough. I have another bottle. Um, and I'm only filling the dish. I don't wanna stack them on top. And then I'm just gonna do this many just to make sure this really works. Um, let, me, let me take the lid off and I'll be right back. All right, so the alcohol, the one bottle was just enough to cover them. As you can see, some of them are floating. Um, the only one that wasn't floating is this one with the hole. So I actually took a toothpick and poked an itty bitty hole at the top of each one so the liquid could go all the way through, through because I do want them completely covered. Um, I don't really want to put a little hole in each one, but I also need them to sink and you can like barely see the hole. And most sea urchins have holes anyway when you find them because of being eaten by other sea creatures. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and poke a hole in the rest so they will sink and be completely covered. And then I'm gonna leave them in here in this liquid for a day. And, um, and then I'm going to reuse the liquid with the rest. So basically I'm gonna do a batch every day um, until the liquid looks too gross. Um, and then I'll, I'll buy more if I need to, but I don't wanna buy a fresh bottle for each one. It is alcohol, so I should be able to reuse it. All right, these sea urchins have been soaking for 24 hours. Now I am going to rinse them off. And my sister has done this before. She's the one who told me how to do this. And she actually said when I, after I rinse them off um, to just take a Q-tip and rub it on the inside to make to see if, because this alcohol, I thought it got rid of the stink. It doesn't necessarily get rid of the stink. It loosens stuff up. And so if I missed anything by cleaning it, I can wipe it out. So what causes the stink if, if there's any insides left over? And so I'm gonna rinse these, wipe down the inside one last time, and then dry them in the garage. It would be better if it was like hot out. <laughs> it's not. Um, so it's just gonna take a little longer to dry. So let's try this. And she did tell me, see how there's some bar, um, what are they called? Spines, sea urchin spines. I'm just going to leave them because I'm going to reuse this alcohol and do the rest. And then I'll drain the spines later. I'm not going to throw the loose spines away. She said sometimes the spines come off, sometimes they don't. It just depends. And um, I'll keep the spines that fall off and do something with them. So let me get these rinsed off and go from there. All right. I rinsed them off. I wiped the inside down with a Q-tip. I'm kind of glad 
I listened to Holly on that step because some of them came out clean and then some of them had brown stuff on them. And a couple of them, I found a couple teeth that I missed. And so that will definitely help. Um, you wanna make sure all the teeth are gone on the inside. So now I'm gonna put these in the garage and start the next batch. And I am just gonna reuse this liquid. It's a little yellow, it should be clear, but I wanna see if I can get one more use out of it. It just smells like alcohol, so hopefully I can get another use out of it before I have to replace it with the fresh alcohol. All right, here are all the sea urchins. They have been drying in my garage for the last couple months. They are completely dry and they are 90% smell free. There are a couple of them. If I hold it close to my nose, they have a slight beachy smell, fishy smell, but overall I think it turned out pretty good. Um, I assume during the summer it would be a lot easier to dry in the sun to get rid of the stink, but I got these in January and so they had to sit in my cold garage. Um, heat works a lot better to get rid of smells, um, but overall I'm happy with them. Like I said, you have to really stick it up to your nose to smell anything. And so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna keep a couple of these good ones for like a shadow frame box that I have, these small itty bitty ones, but the rest of them I am going to stack in this container. This lantern I picked up at Michael's, 40% off. Just gonna um, fill it nicely with the sea urchins, stack them upon each other and see how that looks. And it'll go somehow in my bathroom to display the sea urchins. All right, here we go. So from the distance, you definitely can't really tell what it is, but they're for me, I know what it is. And then you open it up and they, they are layered and I might, and I like this method because I can take them out and uh, use them for other craft projects. But for now, they're safe inside this lantern. They're not going to get damaged. And um, I know what's inside. Definitely, you know, not the best idea I've ever had. But it's a good storage option until I can decide what I really want to do with them. All right, that's it. That's the sea urchins. Um, this was fun cleaning them. It is a little longer process when you do it in the winter. I don't always find sea urchins in Sanibel, so um, this was a nice treat to actually find some. It's something a little different. And then I have these two little ones I kept to the side, and I have this smaller shadow box. I've shown it before. Um, if you're interested, I have a my a video showing my bathroom and how it's decorated with seashells. Those will go in there and this is going to go on the floor in one of the bathrooms. And then I also have a bigger lantern, it's, um, slightly bigger than this. And that one I'm going to fill with the rest of the shells that I got on this same trip. And um, I'm going to layer them bigger at the bottom, smaller at top. And I will show that in a separate shell cleaning video. Thanks for watching. Please hit the like and subscribe buttons and I will see you later.